a bit of a for sake of it type of video. I haven't really shown you guys much of the work I do in the shop. I try to find something, but um, I thought I'd maybe just do a quick video of doing these, cutting these threads on the manual lathe. Be a good job for the Mazak, of course, but unfortunately that's not going as if you've been really watching the previous videos I've been posting. But I'll just go over and do a, just a couple of runs. I'll see how it works out anyway. It's just a matter of getting these guys in a decent position where I can work and you guys can still see is probably the hardest thing about doing videos. Um, the material is 4140, a uh, two-inch diameter shaft um, with a four-and-a-half TPI thread or four-and-a-half threads per inch thread, uh, a fairly coarse thread, which is standard thread for two-inch, but it is a fairly coarse thread to cut, especially on a manual lathe. Uh, they're not totally finished. You can sort of see a bit of a burr down the end there. So I've got to come back and chamfer the ends just to just to knock that burr off the end of them. But I'll just take you over and show you one last one that I've got to do. I've got 16 of these to do in total. And so I'll just show you that before I start cutting it. Just show you a bit of the prep that I've done. Nothing too big deal. Maybe, as I say, do a couple of cuts on the lathe. And we'll see how that works out. You'll have to excuse my dirty work rag. I just put this on the trolley just for more so to catch the coolant as I'm taking parts off of, of whichever machine. I don't know whichever machine I'm working on at the time. But um, so the prep on the shaft is um, because they do get plated, I've had to skim down the size of the shaft to allow for the plating. I have been caught out of them before and I've had to recut the threads after they've come back from plating, which is a pain. And I set it back up in the lathe again and was looked at that it was my fault. So I didn't get anything for the sake of it, and I had to recut all the threads of the previous job. But I did take them undersized, but obviously not enough either that or the plate had got too heavy. Um, the guy who plated and probably put too much um, coating on there, and, and um, I got stuck with recutting the threads again, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. So I've skimmed them down that little bit more this time. Probably they'll be complaining it's probably too much this time, but taking a bit of a skim cut in there, so you can probably see the difference from the raw bar. Uh, down to where I've machined it in. Uh, with the 4140, you do get some nice chips. Just grab one off the floor. They're not the easiest thing to chip break, especially when you're cutting three. So, so, so the sort of the length of, if I can sort of get it in scale of the bars, so that's sort of like the streams that are coming off. Obviously, when you're thread cutting, it's pretty difficult to chip break. Um, so you're pretty much getting that string coming off per cut. And it, and it does vary with... Uh, with the depth of cut too, it's about three and a half mil depth of cut, uh, or probably a little over an eighth of an inch. I'm not too sure how that'd convert into imperial. I can just sort of give you rough measurements. Uh, the other end has just got a little taper on the other end. Not that it has any bearing on the thread cutting, but it just has a, a bit of a taper cut on the other end. And, you know, the 4140 turns nice if you've got the right feeds and speeds and the right tool in there. It definitely doesn't like being cut uh, in small amounts. If you've ever cut 4140 and you try to take a skim cut, you get a nice smooth finish. It's sort of coming in on size, and you can sort of see the finish there. Uh, it's coming in nice, but then you've got to do a skim cut just to get the exact size, and you actually make a mess of it. <laughs> That's the only probably downside with cutting 4140. It, it definitely likes a little bit of depth of cut, which is probably good on a CNC, but probably not so much if you're trying to dial the size in on a on a manual lathe. So I'll get you set up on the manual lathe and um, as I say, try to get you in a spot where I can um, probably you guys can see you're not in my way. And we'll see how that goes. If you guys see this video, you know that I was able to set the camera up. But um, yeah, just setting the camera up is probably the hardest part about doing videos. It's a little bit of a pain trying to run jobs and it is uh, it is a fairly quick moving tool. I don't run a high RPM, but it doesn't take long to get from the start point down to this uh, landing that I've cut in there already. So I won't go through too much of the specs, that's pretty much it, as I say, the pretty, pretty much straightforward. I've already mentioned the material and the thread size, so that's pretty much it. We'll just get you over on the label and get started. So I've got him held pretty close up on the on the lathe chuck. Um, even though the size of the bar, you still do get chatter, believe it or not. You wouldn't think you would with that much um, well, dense of material, but it does chatter. Uh, I think probably just more so because of the... The material and, and the profile of the tool too when you're cutting 60 degree threads in the case of this one which is a uh, the four and a half tpi unc thread which as i said before it's a standard uh two inch thread but it, if you do try and hang it out a little bit to try and leave a little bit of room or you think it'd be okay here yeah, it does still get the it still does get a bit of chatter i tried to hold it a little bit further out from the chuck as i was sort of uh, finishing the job and had one sort of cutting out sticking out probably another 
know, maybe another inch further. Uh, I tried to cut it, and as I was sort of getting into it, started to get a bit of chatter, so I had to reset and set up my tool again and can continue on, which is not a major big deal, but yeah, it was picking a bit of chatter in the actual cut, so I had to choke it right up on as much as I can. It's just to leave, there's probably just a small amount of room, you could probably see there's probably only maybe a couple of mils you can probably see. So I won't yabber on too much longer, I'll just try and find a spot where I can stick these guys, where it'd be nice to be able to hold the camera and cut the thread at the same time, but I need both hands, so it's going to be pretty hard to handheld use, guys. Just setting up the camera best as I can, I hope you guys can see you pretty much exactly where I pretty much want to be. This is probably the hard thing about doing videos, as I mentioned probably before. Uh, I won't worry about doing too much on it. I'll just sort of give you a bit of a gauge of probably just do the, probably the first two cuts. I'll see how we go, and I'll just you know, switch on the camera as I'm sort of getting into it. That's probably down towards the end of the cut there. Now, just checking that with the camera to see how what you can and can't see. So I'll just get that started up. As I say, it's, it does move fairly quick with that four and a half threads per inch. So I don't run a high RPM. So just give myself a bit of time to knock out the half the uh, half nut. And even more so, even more difficult with you guys right where I want to be. So I'll get it started up and then we'll get you switched on and get moving with it all. What I might do is, um, it's sort of funny when I'm doing this video because I don't edit my video, so this stops this stop start in, in with the pauses. I'm, it's looking like chapters, but when you watch it as, as one video, it probably sounds a bit funny, but I'm sort of pausing in between shots, and uh, without the editing, it probably sounds a bit funny. But so I'm just basting the, the um, basting it like a little like a chicken, and getting it all lubed up, ready to go. So we just give a bit of a coat of cutting oil before I start cutting. I might just do the first cut and I'll probably kill the video after that because if I stuff up the first thread, I can sort of recover a little bit from it. Well, a little bit. I don't have any more material. It's customer supplied material. So if I stuff it up, I'll be going to buy some more material. So we'll just get it fired up. And if you excuse some of the noise, but we'll just get going with it and I'll just throw it into gear as I'm ready to go. I'll just leave the camera running. <laughs> Don't get big spore for the for the early cuts as you can probably see it's just to give you a bit of an indication of of it cutting more than anything else i won't boy as i say boy through the whole lot it's not a lesson on how to cut threads it's more of a uh, for the sake of it type of video uh as i say it's probably not even maybe worth even videoing but i just thought i'd just throw this one in there just for the sake of it anyway i'll just drive this back out as i've mentioned before in other videos um, it's a metric machine, so I have to drive, I have to power out. Um, so we'll just get it sort of thrown into reverse and I just drive it back out. So for those who aren't familiar, um, metric lead screw on my machine, cutting uh, imperial threads um, can engage, disengage the half nut when you get to the end, obviously, but you need to drive back out, so you need to wait for your your uh, dial to come back around to the start point and drive back out again. Metric's not so critical, obviously. You cut the metric threads on a metric machine. It's not a drama, but imperial threads on a metric machine, which my machine is, living in the metric world. Um, you have to drive back out again. But that'll probably do for this video. Just sort of, even, as, even as short as I was going to try and make this video, there's still a little bit of time in this one. But um, it gives you a bit of an indication of sort of like the types of jobs that I do. I just sort of just throw this one together for those who are interested. Otherwise, that'll probably do for this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Okay, bye for now.